In this section, we're going to talk about planning for SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business. When you're migrating to Microsoft 365, you have to determine how you're going to move your on-premises data to the cloud. For example, you may have on-premises file shares that you want to migrate to SharePoint or OneDrive, or you may have an on-premises SharePoint farm that you want to fully or partly move into SharePoint Online. You have several options available to you. The simplest one is just to manually upload everything. This is appropriate for small ad hoc migrations, but if you want to migrate larger amounts of data in a more structured manner, you can install the OneDrive sync client and push out policies to redirect some or all of your users' Windows known folders to OneDrive. Or you can use the SharePoint migration tool, which provides more control and flexibility and allows you to migrate a number of different kinds of file stores. Using the SharePoint migration tool is pretty straightforward. It's a small free download and once installed, you can use it to migrate from on-prem SharePoint or file shares interactively. And you can also perform bulk migrations using JSON or CSV files that describe what to migrate. Now I'm gonna show you a demonstration of how the tool works. Okay, let's take a look at using the SharePoint migration tool to migrate some file share data into SharePoint Online. So here's my setup. I have a, a SharePoint Online site with the document library that I've called public documents. It currently doesn't contain anything. And I have a simulated public file share here with a bunch of folders with files in them. And I've downloaded the SharePoint migration tool. So I'm going to sign into it now. This has now launched the SharePoint migration tool, and I'm going to say I want to start a new migration. And in this case, I want to copy content from a file share, and I'll go ahead and add my directory path in here. And I want to migrate selected folder and folder content. So uh, now I'll say I want to copy content to SharePoint, and specifically I want to copy to Contoso intranet here, and my public documents library that I just created. I'll click Next. Okay, now I could at this point just perform scanning. So in other words, I could tell it, just go and tell me what's going to be involved in doing the migration. In this case, I'm confident that it's gonna work. So I'll leave it that way. I do want to preserve permissions. So in other words, I want to keep any permissions that have been set on my file share, along with migrating file version history and doing automatic user mapping. So again, this assumes that my user principal names on-prem can be mapped uniformly to my cloud-based ones. In this case, I happen to know they can be. Additional things I might do is, uh, is create manual user mappings with a file, which I won't do right now, keep all versions, include hidden files, and so forth. I'm going to leave that the way that it is and select Migrate. And there we go. My migration is complete and uh, about 50,000 files in about 25 minutes. I can now go and view the reports here and see uh, how it all went, but I'm going to go ahead and save this first and then go and check on how it all went. So, um, so first, let's take a look at the summary report. And here it is. So you can see it shows the total transfer, all the information about when it started, when it ended. And if we go back now and take a look at the other reports, Here's the performance report. Let's take a look at this in Excel. So you can see very detailed information about which files were migrated, how long it took to migrate them, how much data they contain. So this, among other things, gives you a full audit of the entire process. And of course, I can also go and just check on the results. So here in the internet site, I can now check the public documents library and see that I now have a new public folder that contains all of my user data folders. And within each folder, all the files for that folder, and of course, their contents. Planning how external sharing can be done in your organization is a critically important administrative decision that should be made early to avoid user confusion. Anyone who's ever used OneDrive knows that it's extremely easy to share content stored in OneDrive with external users, which is great in terms of usability and potentially worrying to organizations that want to safeguard their sensitive data. The external sharing settings in SharePoint and OneDrive gives the admin a good amount of control over how content gets shared, so admins can decide who should be allowed to share what and how. Sharing settings are configured by the SharePoint Admin Center and allow you to permit sharing to anyone, new and existing guests, only existing guests, 
or only internal users, along with a number of additional refinements. SharePoint site admins can also manage how sharing works at the site level. Admins can go to the settings menu and select site permissions. From there, they can select site sharing. There, in addition to configuring who is permitted to share files, folders, and the entire site, they can also allow users without permissions to request access and specify who the email goes to when a request is made. Although the topic of Azure Active Directory groups is in no way unique to SharePoint, planning for Azure AD groups is a critical part of planning a SharePoint deployment. Generically, Azure AD groups organize users, but there are a couple of types of groups. Security groups are just for managing security, that is, organizing users who require similar resource permissions. Microsoft 365 groups imply creation of other assets, for example, distribution lists, teams, and even SharePoint sites. Conversely, creating SharePoint online team sites also creates Microsoft 365 groups with the same membership. The SharePoint Admin Center allows configuration and management of many other settings. For example, SharePoint admins can control how users are notified about SharePoint activity, whether or not users can create new pages, the default settings for new sites, and much more. 